My player of the tournament would be Jasprit Bumrah. He started a little bit slowly in the tournament, but he has been the main man for Mumbai Indians and, and one of the central reasons why they have done so well in the tournament. Once he got onto the saddle, uh, his form never dipped and he's bold in difficult uh, phases of the game. I'd say just be Pumbra. My player of the tournament is Surya Kumar Yadav because he batted at number three, which is a very crucial position. And the way he batted, it's not only about runs, it's not because he's part of the champion team, it's just the way he got those runs with the fluency, with just the sheer class. And that's why, for me, he's the player of the tournament. Never easy playing for a week. Uh, bowling side, he didn't have too much of quality bowlers for company, plus the cameos that he played and sheer consistency and impact every time he was on the field. Uh, my player of the tournament, Jofraj. My player of the tournament is going to a batsman, an opening batsman in Shikhar Darwin. Now, centuries, unless you're Chris Gale, are very difficult, difficult to come by in T20 cricket. He scored two and his first two ever in T20 cricket. So to me, his value to the Delhi Capitals was enormous in their quest to reach the finals. Standout performance of the tournament for me would be Varun Chakravarti taking five wickets. Uh, he did not bowl a single over uh, in the first 10 overs. And now when you're bowling all four overs uh, in the second half uh, of the T20 inning and you return with a figure of five wickets in four overs, uh, I thought that was exceptional. The only five wicket fall in the entire league phase. My standout performance of the tournament is Rashid Khan against Delhi, where he bowled a spell where he could he took three wickets for seven. Shikhar Dawan's back to back hundreds. To me, that little phase was phenomenal. Either side of that, you would ask more of him, but just in those two innings, that really was special. A young rookie kind of cricketer, Rahul Tevatia you know, achieve the impossible uh, in the end, actually winning the game, especially after the kind of start that he had. Got to say, that will be the performance for me that I'll take away from this IPL 2020. He nearly made the clock stop. He was going that slowly with the bat, but he somehow managed to hold on to all the character that he's got and managed to turn his fortunes and his team fortunes around with what was quite an amazing half century. Most impressive uncapped player for me was Varun Chakravarti. Uh, sensational this season. Excellent temperament and uh, Sunil Narayan kind of bowler. And KKR very lucky to have found a new model of Sunil Narayan. So, Varun Chakravarti. The standout uncapped Indian performer uh, for me would be Dev Dutt We saw him in uh, Mushtaq Ali Trophy, in domestic circuit, but then uh, I feel he's a different kettle of fish and uh, he rose to the occasion and how, I think uh, he's one for the future. Surya Kumar Yadav from Mumbai Indians coming at number three. It is just mind-blowing to think that this guy has not represented his country. He just bats with great grace, control, and he seems to do it without even breaking a sweat. To me, he's a real class act. Ishan Kishan has shown great power. He's shown versatility to bat at the top when Rohit went missing, batting uh, a little bit lower down as well. And so I'm seeing the growth of a very special player. He was asked to open the batting. He was very successful there. He was then asked to bat at number four. He was equally successful there. And the way he batted, he's got the ability to hit those big shots against pen and against fast bowlers, doesn't get rattled by pace. So he's probably my most impressive uncapped player. Honestly, when you talk about IPL 2020, it is impossible to not talk about Rahul Tevatia because the story itself is fascinating. Uh, starts as a marginal player and then uh, uh, does what uh, not many people expected him to do. I think uh, he was the biggest surprise of IPL 2020. That particular innings against uh, you know Kings 11, when he uh, got that 50 and that tremendous turnaround and that he carried the confidence right through the season. Brilliant stuff from the young man and in many ways, a surprise as well. My biggest surprise of the tournament really has been how quickly an individual or a team's form can come and go. Example, Kings Eleven not winning a lot at the start, then going on a five-game uh, winning streak, 
and then not being able to cross the line in the last two. And, and that goes for individuals as well. We all felt that after the first few games or first few weeks of this year's IPL that we were going to see the spinners come in and take control of the game. But it wasn't the case. We saw some of the world's best pace bowlers welcome the, uh, the opportunity to play in the UAE with the extra bit of pace and bounce more importantly and they all became right up there in the top wicket takers where normally we're so used to seeing spin dominant tournaments. Sandeep Sharma, not a lot of people have actually rated him that highly but this tournament has actually showed that it is not important to be someone who is bowling at 140. It is just important to be smart and it is important to be how you bowl within your limits as well and Sandeep Sharma for me is probably a surprise for a lot of people. My biggest disappointment from a, a team perspective was CSK not being able to find the right combination of players, even though they weren't allowed as every other team to play at home at Chepok this year. I still thought, wow, they've done well at the end winning three on the truck. We've so used to seeing them, you know, compete in finals. Uh, we know that they had some challenges at the beginning of the tournament but they only really found their feet right at the back end of the tournament, which was far too late. So not to see uh, the team in yellow compete in the finals was a big surprise to us all. You know, he's actually tailor-made for T20 cricket, has had very good seasons over the years. That's where he made his name, Rishabh Pant. And in the end, you know, I'm glad he got some runs in the final, but in the penultimate game against Sunrise Hyderabad, he took really out of sorts, all, almost like he's just forgotten his game. So uh, that was a real disappointment. The lack of uh, uh, Andre Russell innings, uh, because we've all gotten used to it. Let's be honest, 2018, 2019, this was promised, this was expected that Andre Russell show will happen. Uh, but unfortunately, it just did not in IPL 2020, at least in the league phase. See, the biggest disappointment of the tournament is the form of Glenn Maxwell. They actually had a lot of faith on him because had it been any other franchise, they wouldn't have given, given him such a long run. So probably he was the biggest disappointment of the tournament. Somebody who made me go wow uh, a lot of the times, and being a batsman, I'm slightly biased in that regard to Suri Kumar Yadav. The kind of shots that he played right through the season, it just made you go wow. Surya Kumar Yadav extra cover driving has been imperious. I would pay good money to enter a cricket ground to watch him bat and play that shot. Had to be Nicholas Puran on the boundary line when he saved that six. That is probably the best feeling I've ever seen in my life. It was the most remarkable save you'd ever wish to see in your life. Um, again, it's one of those bits of fielding that you're more than happy to see it on loop time and time again. Who would have thought that we'll have a double super over uh, and that, I thought, was uh, the wow moment of uh, IPL 2020. You can't talk about IPL 2020 without uh, referring to that one game, the double Super Over. The fact that cricket has again united our, our cricketing family, our far-reaching family, during some incredibly challenging times. It's a credit to the IPL, it's a credit to the BCCI. They managed to put together this tournament and I think it's brought a lot of joy to a lot of people that are suffering at the moment. My biggest takeaway from the tournament really is a great depth. When the teams get their selections right, when they are focused, anyone can beat anyone on a given day in the IPL. And we saw quite a lot of that coming down to the last week and a half of the league stage. It's not only 2020, one takeaway from every IPL is to stay in the moment. Build a team for that particular year, not for the future. And that is why Mumbai Indians have been so successful. That's why Chennai Super Kings have been very successful. They build a year for that, but they build a team for that particular year. The big takeaway for me is that, uh, you know, we shouldn't get too excited and try and fast track all these under 19 players. Enough of this romanticism with young raw fast bowlers and hoping that they would be effective in an IPL format which is a you know, high pressure environment and same goes for batsmen and, uh, who are young and seem to have the power game because winning the IPL is not just about power. 
one takeaway from IPL 2020 would be that uh, UAE is actually a phenomenal venue when it comes to holding a tournament of this magnitude uh, in the prevailing circumstances uh, they've pulled off uh, a miracle so UAE as a venue for uh, not just this IPL maybe the next edition of the IPL is something that we have learned from this edition